the Northwest Seaport Alliance powers the Puget Sound economy by moving goods across the globe, creating family wage jobs in our state. That's the power of two. Two world-class ports that partnered to position the Puget Sound region as an economic powerhouse in international trade. Farmers, manufacturers, and other Northwest makers depend on us to deliver their products to the world and our neighbors depend on us to fill store shelves with food, toys, electronics, clothing, and housewares to furnish our lives and homes. Marine cargo operations at the Port of Seattle and Tacoma support 48,000 jobs in Washington State and generate about one-third of our economy. These numbers represent people investing their time, energy, and money to make our communities vibrant. We are port employees tug operators, ship pilots, longshore workers, truck drivers, terminal operators, railroad workers. We get our hands dirty creating a cleaner, greener cargo supply line. We develop innovative solutions to keep our air and waterways clean, because we live here too. Technology that reduces truck idling and ships that plug into electricity ashore, LED lights to conserve energy, and plants and soil that prevent stormwater pollution from entering the sound. We represent people raising infrastructure, raising families, raising the bar. We are your business partners, taxpayers, and neighbors. When you see a cargo ship in the bay, a semi-truck on the highway, a train rolling down the tracks, you know we're delivering on our promise to continue powering the Pacific Northwest economy. The Northwest Seaport Alliance brings the power of two to you. I just wanted to reemphasize, um, you know, in talking this morning and moving forward with this alliance, you know, we create jobs, we earn revenue but to a limited extent. The jobs we create, the revenue we earn, is all to enable, it's all to amplify the jobs and revenue that's created by our customers. So we can't be a success without you being a success. And we really appreciate all you do. We really appreciate your partnership. But you know, a few years ago, we realized that you were having to change your, the way you do, do business in a very turbulent global economy. And for us to be successful, in helping you do what you do, we had to change the way we do business. And, you know, the commission, uh, it's hard to get 10 people in a room to agree on anything. Uh, but what we have agreed on is a fabulous job our staff at the Seaport Alliance has done in the last year. We, uh, of course, we continue to have challenges, and John will talk about those challenges. But we've had a lot of successes this year. And really, I think what we're doing is starting to pay off, and it's all a credit to our Alliance CEO, John Wolf. So without further ado, I'd like to invite John to the stage. It's good to be here. Uh, gosh, John, um, so many of your leadership principles uh, are, are, are so meaningful to what we're doing uh, with the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Thank you for sharing those, and I look forward to reading your book. So um, great, great message. Uh, before I jump into uh, my comments, I think I should uh, cover something uh, very important, and that is to um, ask um, Captain of uh, the U.S. Coast Guard, Linda Sturgis, and her other title, uh, search and Rescue Mission Coordinator to come forward and give a nice uh, recognition to Commissioner Marzano for rescuing me on Interstate 5. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, John. Glad you so as you all know, the Coast Guard has many functions here, obviously uh, allying with our seaport partners, but also we uh, coordinate search and rescue in the area. We didn't have to coordinate this one, but we can call this one good for the record. So come on up, sir. <laughs> Commissioner, would you please join me on the stage? <laughs> come on up. So gonna on behalf of the uh, men and women of Coast Guard Sector Puget Sound, we're going to give the Commissioner the uh, Sector Puget Sound Search and Rescue coin. <laughs> so thank you, sir. Thank you. 
<laughs> Years from now, the story will change quite a bit, I guarantee you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, no question, uh, transportation and logistics are important to our industry. And, um, you know, we, we were talking about change and, um, and some of the comments that John mentioned and, uh, and, and even Commissioner Creighton mentioned about the speed of change. It's been pretty amazing, uh, the speed of change in our industry. And um, I've been at this for quite a while. And I think back to my early years when I started in this industry, I, I grew up uh, in the operations side of the industry, and I was working at a terminal that was a very busy terminal, yet it was a pretty simple model. There was a, uh, a terminal operator and a shipping line, and both of those were owned by the same company. And so it was clear the mission, and that was for the terminal operator to serve its one customer, the shipping line, which was part of the same uh, business. So I reflect on today, a uh, very different business model, much more complicated. And, um, and the speed at which we are seeing change is just amazing. And so our ability to adjust to that change is what's going to make us successful. And I, I think back even just the last couple of years uh, where we had upwards of 20 shipping lines serving the Trans-Pacific trade. And today, with the announcement of the mergers and acquisitions, and of course, a shipping line uh, filing bankruptcy, uh, we have today about 13 shipping lines serving the Trans-Pacific trade. And there's speculation that uh, into the future there will be fewer than 13. So um, what we know with certainty is more change is coming. There's also change with the uh, shipping alliances. The uh, alliances have, uh, shipping companies have formed their own partnerships, these uh, shipping alliances. There are four today. Actually, as of probably uh, April 1st next, or next week, officially, and uh, there will be three shipping alliances. That creates huge disruption within the industry and certainly for ports and the further introduction of larger vessels. We have larger vessels in the trade today and more coming. And that taxes the whole supply chain uh, because the supply chain is a system. And so uh, regardless of the growth of trade, having fewer vessels, fewer strings, uh, calling the ports and, and then uh, moving that cargo through the system in a shorter time frame taxes that system. And so we are having to break down our existing systems and reinvest in those systems so that those systems can adequately handle that increased volume in a tighter time frame. So I don't see the pace of change slowing anytime soon. And I think about how we might respond to that change. We can certainly ignore it. and. Uh, and act uh, in the same way that we have in the past. And whereas that may have worked in the past, I would argue it won't work today and we will become less relevant. Or we can react to the change. And um, reacting to the change is better than ignoring it, yet by reacting to the change, you're always behind the competition because the leader is ahead of, the, ahead of you all the time. So you're maybe in second place or worse, and um, that's not a great place to be. Or we can create the change. We can be that leader in the industry. And that's what I would argue occurred when the ports of Seattle and Tacoma formed the Northwest Seaport Alliance. It grabbed the attention of the industry. People rose up and said, what is this? And, um, and it really uh, emphasized that we are leaders in this industry and we will continue to be leaders in this industry. For years, this community, this region, talked about the two ports working together. And we did in many ways, yet uh, there was still competition between the two ports. And that worked okay during the time of huge growth. Back in the early 2000s, mid 2000s, uh, everyone was growing their business. And so even though we may have been 
losing market share within our gateway, that wasn't the focus. The focus was on our individual growth and the fact that Port of Seattle was growing its volume and Port of Tacoma was growing its volume. And even though shipping lines amidst that growth moved from Tacoma to Seattle and Seattle to Tacoma, the emphasis was on overall growth of those individual ports. Yet we all know what happened in the late 2000s with the recession. That was a game changer for us in the industry. And it made us pause and look at our business model in new and different ways. And I, I want to commend the 10 commissioners um, for their leadership in leaning into this opportunity because, again, it was discussed for, for decades, this idea of working together as one, as one gateway. And quite frankly, the industry globally sees us as a single gateway. They're happy to leverage us against each other if we allow them to, um, yet I don't think that's best for our customer base, and I'll explain why in a moment. Um, the, the global industry sees us as a single gateway, a single marketplace. And so we should act that way. And so we formed this Northwest Seaport Alliance. Now, this hasn't been easy. Um, great things often aren't. And um, we had two cultures that were different, uh, different approaches to the marketplace. Seattle approached things in a different way than Tacoma, not better or worse, just different. And we needed to bring these two organizations together and take the best of both organizations and apply it to this new company, the Northwest Seaport Alliance. And that's what we've been doing over the last year. So what does all this mean and what happens next? So after forming the Seaport Alliance, we took our individual strategic plans that were focused on the Tacoma Harbor and the Seattle Harbor, tossed those to the side because they didn't apply anymore. And we took a big picture view of the gateway as a whole. And what was great about that was it expanded our playing field and it gave us greater flexibility with the assets that we had both in the North Harbor of Seattle and the South Harbor in Tacoma to respond in a better way to our customers' needs. We additionally built an infrastructure investment plan that matched the needs of our customers. So whereas in the past, being a Tacoma person, we were focused on the investments in our assets in Tacoma and how we could respond to the customers' needs there, that changed when we looked at the broader playing field. And for Seattle, it changed because we identified those few international big ship container facilities where we were going to invest heavily in Terminal 5 here in the North Harbor of Seattle, in the South Harbor, the General Central Peninsula. And then it allowed us to make other strategic decisions about those assets that may not be suited into the future for big ship international container business, yet can serve other types of cargo activities that create great jobs and economic wealth for this community as well and as part of our overall business portfolio. Things like the automobile business, the brake bulk and bulk business. So it gave us much more flexibility. It allowed us to respond better to our customer base and provided a different value proposition for our customers. And we're still learning. We also doubled down on our operational excellence. That's a core competency of this gateway, and we can always do better. We can close that gap. And so we stood up an executive advisory council. This is a council made up of industry experts from all aspects of the industry. Many of you probably sitting in this room today are part of that executive advisory council. It's a group uh, made up of shipping lines, shippers, terminal operators, trucking companies, railroads, labor, certainly the port, and many others sitting together, breaking down the inefficiencies of our gateway and looking for opportunities to drive out that inefficiency and raise the bar of performance of our gateway. And we developed metrics as a benchmark to uh, score ourselves against uh, past performance. And so we're able to look on an annualized basis and even more frequently as to how we're doing against those benchmarks and raise the bar of performance. 
We also stood up an operations service center, and this is an area of focus where we have men and women that are solely focused on day-to-day -day operations and creating greater visibility and transparency to the movement of cargo through our supply chain. We also stepped into a, an extended gate program during the peak season. That was very successful for our customers, and I want to thank uh, the Commission for their uh, bold decision to fund, help fund that, uh, that extended gate program. It allowed us during that peak season to ease the congestion at the gates where we oftentimes feel that congestion. We've enhanced our web visibility with gate cameras, vessel schedules, export receiving dates, and the like so that our customers can see real time what's happening within our gateway. And I'm excited about where we're going to take that whole program next. There's some neat ideas out there, and um, we want to be leaders in that area. We stood up customer peak planning meetings and terminal operator meetings, and those happen on a regular basis so that we can plan ahead for what we can anticipate to occur with the peak season and some of the terminal operating challenges. And we have really doubled down on our partnership with our labor force, um, both Local 19 in Seattle and 23 in Tacoma, and certainly the foreman and clerks local as well. And we've actually made joint customer calls with the leadership of Local 19 and 23. More to come in that area. So after our first full year of operation of the Northwest Seaport Alliance, I'm happy to report that it's been a success. If you look at our year-over-year -year volume, we increased by almost 10% that container volume. That's huge in the industry. We also turned the tide on market share, where we were losing market share for years to other gateways. We held our own. We had huge financial success as well. And that's really important for us as a public business because we need to continue to reinvest in our gateway and the performance of the gateway. And most important, we were recognized by the industry, by our customers, is that gateway that is easiest to do business with. And that is critically important for us. We also partnered with local municipalities. Good example, the Seattle Heavy Hall Corridor. Great partnership with the City Council of Seattle and the mayor and we want to thank them for their efforts there. And in Tacoma, with Port Tacoma Road, uh, we rebuilt that road as the entry to the South Harbor, and that was a great partnership with the city of Tacoma and many others. We've also worked hard with uh, those partners to better understand land use compatibility. That's a huge issue for us uh, with the industrial waterfront to make sure that we protect those important middle-class jobs by having appropriate buffers between the industrial activities and the urban core. And I want to recognize the state leadership in passing the transportation funding package last year, a $16 billion transportation investment package that's going to allow us to complete SR-167 and 509 within our gateway. So it's been an exciting year, um, certainly challenging. And um, I want to emphasize again that we are being leaders in this industry, and, and we continue to look for ways in which we can lean into that leadership. Complacency can be a dangerous thing. It allows the competition to catch up. We need to have that sense of urgency. That sense of urgency drives us to continue to get out of our comfort zone. We need to make today's way of operating obsolete tomorrow. We need to make today's way of operating obsolete tomorrow. The culture of our organization will continue to be more externally focused on customer needs and operational excellence. This business is not for the faint of heart. It takes courage, bold leadership, and calculated risk-taking to stay on top. So let's buckle up, bear down, and lean into this incredible time of change. Thank you.